Welcome to the Bigfoot Society. In this episode, I talked to Dee from Eastern Oregon about his Bigfoot encounters in the Wallowa area of the state. If you've experienced something similar or have more information regarding Bigfoot in that area of Oregon, please reach out to me immediately after this episode. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, please contact me directly at BigfootSociety at gmail.com and please make sure you check out patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society where you can become a member and get extra episodes every single week. Also, to all of those who reached out about the harsh language used in last week's episode, we hear you and we're now aware that a lot of children listen to this podcast, for which I'm thankful. Uh, you'll be happy to know that from here on out, all harsh language will be edited out of the podcast for the public. Uh, however, for members on Patreon and YouTube, uh, in the YouTube channel member area, you'll still be able to hear the full uncut interview, harsh language and all, in the raw audio that's released every week. Again, thank you for your feedback, and let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got the privilege of talking to D tonight. Dee's a listener from the great state of Oregon, and he has a few encounters uh, to share. But how's it going tonight, D? Going real good, Jeremiah. Awesome. Now, I'm, I'm excited to hear. Uh, I've heard a little bit about what you've experienced, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and give it right over to you. And feel free to, to share what you'd like about what you experienced. Sure. Well, I'd like to start out and give a little background. I, I grew, up, grew up in uh, eastern Oregon, uh, and I was out in the woods a lot. My grandpa was a logger, and he, I hunted and fished with him, and he took me everywhere out in the woods. And with the experiences I had there, you know, at that time, very little known about Bigfoot, but never experienced anything. Uh, I've been around bears, cougars, you name it. I've had cougars within five feet of me. I've heard them scream. Bears have been even closer. So going into the story, I wanted to bring the same thing to my kids. And I had my my son, and I took him everywhere with me. And we were out in the woods a lot getting wood. We were hunting, fishing. Uh, and this this one time... Him and I uh, were going to head out hunting. My brother, oldest brother, was going to bring his fifth wheel up in the woods, and we were going to use it. Well, my son and I decided to go early. So we went a day early, and we were just going to wait for my brother. Now, I've been out in the woods before. I've camped. I've dry camped. I've had tents. I've slept in pickups and everything else. So it was nothing unusual. If brother didn't show up, we're just out in the woods. Well, we got up there, started getting dark. We uh, were up above Wallowa. And I told him, you know, let's stop. Let's build us a fire and uh, get something to eat. And at the time, my son was pretty close to 10 years old. He hadn't quite, he was nine nine and a month to go, nine month, or nine years and a month to go. And so we sat down, we found a spot. It was a wide road and we pulled up in this clearing and we just kind of parked and lit us a fire and got out some stuff to eat. And we were eating and the forest, now what was weird when we were there, we had our fire going, but it was just completely quiet the minute the sun went down. Not a, not a sound. And to me, that was strange because I hadn't encountered much of anything like that. Usually you hear something, uh, crickets or something. You just hear something. It's just not that quiet. So we ate and we were talking and you know, his son kept asking me, is Uncle David going to show up? And I said, well, I, he'll show up when he gets here. It's no big deal. And we talked for a couple hours just by the fire chatting. Well, about 930 at a distance. Now, if I had to guess, I'd hate to guess because there's lots of draws around there in canyons and something can sound far away. 
and it's not far away, or you hear it and it sounds like it's close, but it's far away. It's just the way that the sound echoes through those draws. And we heard something, a scream. And I'll tell you, once I heard a Bigfoot scream, I said, that was it. That was it. Just, oh my goodness, loud, but far away. My son looks up at me with these big eyes. He says, Dad, what is that? Ah, I said, don't worry about it. Just, I don't know, animal holler, no big deal. Now, if you could have looked inside of me, you would have seen me going, oh, man, what is that? This is, this is awesome and scary at the same time because you don't know what it is. I mean, it's pure darkness around us. So he kind of he kind of says, well, I says, it's far away anyway. Don't worry about it. It's, it's no big deal. So we were we were talking some more, and it was pretty close. And the reason I know the times is I was waiting for my brother, so I kept looking at my watch. But about a half hour to an hour later, somewhere in there, another scream came. And it was just absolutely positive, the same scream as the Bigfoot ones I've heard. And I was just, and he looked at me this time, and he says, Dad, this is scaring me. I said, don't worry about it. We're fine. I mean, there's nothing out here going to get us. And, uh, of course, inside I was saying, it's getting closer. And my first thought was, let's get out of there. You know, I just, something inside me just didn't want to stay. And I thought, no, we got to, got to, we just got to stay here because I want to meet my brother up there. And it was 1130 because I looked at my watch. It was 1130. And that thing was right across the road and it screamed. And right now, even talking about it, I get chills up my back. It was horrendous. And my son jumped out up, and he almost started crying. He wanted to get in the truck. I says, "Well, let's let's get in the truck, and we'll we'll drive down to town." And you could hear it rustling in the brush a little bit, not not real loud, but rustling. But that scream. I like I said, I've been around cougar screams, and never ever have I had chills up my spine like that. And it was so loud. So we got in the truck, and I started up the truck, and we made a loop around to get turned around to go out the the, the road. Well. The trees weren't that far away from the road. If I had to say, it was about 50 yards. But we turned around, and when our headlights came across that, there was hands and the top of a head looking through a couple of the trees. It was just, I stopped for a second and looked just because I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing this, am I? And my son just looked at me. He says, Dad, let's get out of here. That thing's huge. He, you saw the hands, and they had two trees split apart, two smaller trees. They were pretty close to – when I stood under them, because we went up the next day, but we I stood under them, there was about – I was not even halfway, so they were probably 10, 10 to 11 feet tall. He had them spread apart, was looking through them. And then when we sat there for a few minutes, the hands went back, and the trees were swaying, and we got out of there. And at first, I wanted to stay. I wanted to see more, but then I thought for the safety of my son. That's, you know, I got to protect the kids more than anything. And when it comes to wild animals, you don't really know what they're going to do. I don't trust them. Don't trust wild animals whatsoever because they could be really good, but then they can turn on you. So anyway, we, we saw that my son had tears in his eyes because he, he was just, I think he was going into shock myself. And I, we got down to town and, 
and down into the town and pulled off somewhere. And, you know, neither one of us slept that night to wake up the next morning to, to go hunting. And my brother finally made it up and we went back up in the woods to where we were camped. And like I said, I walked across the road and stood by those trees that were right next to the road. And I was a midget to those trees. And when I looked, I looked up to see how high they were. And it, the thing had to be nine to 10 feet tall, if not a little taller. And started scouring for tracks. And there's, there was, the ground was real hard, but the tall grass. The only thing you could see was the pathway to where it came in. And I, I took my son with me and we tracked it. We tracked the, the walking as far as we could. And I'm no amateur at tracking. I'm not an expert, but I've tracked a lot of game. And we actually followed it to where it went up over the hill and then went down into this draw. And we never found, there was never a, a good track. Like I said, the ground was pretty hard, but you could see the grass being laid over. And the only reason I say I know it was, it was a Bigfoot was because the grass that was laid over was huge compared to my foot. Uh, I, I tried to show my son, I said, see, you put your foot down and he says, well, yeah, but yours is only half of what that one is. I said, that's what I'm saying. I know what we saw and I know what we were following. And we tracked it down as far as I wanted to go because the, it got real thick and steep. And you could, you could see through the brush where the grass was, where it was laid down, and, and you could see it where it went down into the draw. Well, the biggest thing about this was, number one, I wasn't looking for Bigfoot. And number two is, it was the least expected thing I would ever see. Uh, there was, we weren't, we weren't, I wasn't prepared to see it. Uh, as far as like we're out hunting Bigfoot, we were out deer hunting or going to be deer hunting the next day or two. But, and I think that's what surprised me the most. And in the area that we saw it in, what, what was it doing there? There's, there's so many people out in the woods at that time. And it was just, just a strange occurrence. And I know that I'll never forget it. Uh, that's that's exactly never forget it that was the hands i saw the fingers i didn't see thumbs i just saw the fingers hold the trees back just looking through them and the hands were just huge were dark colored but had wrinkles on the knuckles just like a human and the the top of the head was covered with hair it was just hairy and it Oh, and it, it, the thing was just, I can't imagine how tall it was because it, it had to be 10, 11 feet tall. And I was just, I was shook up, I think, just as much as my son, but I wasn't showing him. I didn't want to, I didn't want him scared of the woods is the main thing. And that's the last thing I wanted him to, to be scared to go out in the woods. But I would. We followed it. I looked for tracks. Couldn't find anything. Uh, nothing tracked where you could do any any casts or anything. But it had a big stride. Now this is, like I said, with the grass laid over. It was just almost three strides of bind, which my stride is exactly three feet. And so his stride was about six foot, five foot, six foot strides. And uh, that was that was all we saw the whole time we were up there because I was hoping to see it again, but never did. So we're in northeast Oregon, and did you say north of Wallowa? Wallowa, Wallowa. 
Okay. The city of Wallowa, yeah. Is this yeah. in like a wildlife area or a state park or? No, there's a lot of federal forest service up there. And it used to be a lot of it owned by Boise Cascade. But I think uh, they sold it to a land company, Hancock or something. But it's it's mainly, you know, uh, public, anybody in the public can get up in it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I let people in the Patreon read through what you submitted. And um, if they yeah. have a, a question as well, they can submit the question and there's a chance I might use it. So Scott in the Patreon, uh, he's got a question and it's, it's a good one. What was your relation uh, to the concept of Bigfoot? Were you a Bigfoot believer before this event happened? I think I'd put it this way. I was and wasn't. Okay, I got an open mind, always did. And I first remember my grandpa having a some type of wildlife magazine where they had the the uh, film from, uh, gosh, I can't think of it now. Or they had a picture from the uh, Patterson Giblin film about Bigfoot. Well, I read the article, but I looked at my grandpa and says, hey, grandpa, what do you think about Bigfoot? There you go, Bigfoot. That's all he said. But then I started learning more about it as I went along. And even back then, they didn't have much on it. There was a few books out there. And, of course, I went to the library and got a few books and read about it. But the, the way I looked at it was, you know, I got an open mind, but until I see it, I'm not going to believe it fully. I saw it. I believe it. So I wasn't a full believer, but I wasn't a total skeptic either, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that, it definitely does. And this wasn't like you and your son were like, okay, we're going on a Bigfoot hunt. Like you were just trying to no. get out and enjoy nature, and this just happened to happen. And that's the whole thing about it. And that's why I think sometimes when, when anybody, whether it be me or anybody else, sometimes I think when we go out looking for Bigfoot, I don't think you're going to – I've not seen one go out there looking for it. All mine have happened when – I'm not out there Bigfoot hunting. I'm just out in the woods enjoying enjoying some time. And that was the that's the thing that, that got me the most because I this wooded area I'm talking about, I started hunting and getting wood with my grandpa when I was eight years old. And I'd been through all those woods with him. He logged them all. So he took me everywhere up in there, all over. I, there wasn't a bit of that country I didn't see. And I figured, well, it's too close to a town. You know, it's 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 probably 30 miles to the nearest town out of the woods. But, you know, it's kind of close to town, so you'd never see a Bigfoot out here. You know, that was kind of my thought growing up. And, well, I had even started hunting at eight years old with my grandpa, and he's put me out on walks and said, walk down this hill and I'll meet you down at the road, you know, type thing where uh, nowadays I wouldn't have let my kids do it because I'd be too scared to get lost. But uh, it, it, it was not, it was not the perfect setting to go find Bigfoot. We weren't 30 miles or 40 miles back in the wilderness where nobody goes. This is, this is where, where people are, which really, had me just just had me amazed at the at the at the chance i had to see it oh absolutely man d i think there's a chance your grandpa probably saw something at one time or another i just have a feeling but that i've got you know i'm just kind of kind of guessing well i'm thinking he started logging out in those wood out the woods in 1930 and got his own logging company in 41 and sold out in 69. I believe he was doing what I was doing to my son. And I think he was wanting to not make me scared to go out in the woods. 
he knew if, you know, he knew if I told him, yeah, there's Bigfoot out there, they're big. You never know what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. You know, at eight years old or so, I would have been scared to go out in the woods. <laughs> I was scared oh, to sure. death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he probably, you know, he probably was doing something like that. Yeah, I I could definitely see that. But what year again was this that you and your son had the experience? It was 1997. Uh, okay. Thinking back to when you saw the head and the fingers, um, did you get a chance to see like what kind of the shape of the head was at all? Or did you remember anything that you saw about the head for details? The head part I saw was just covered with hair. If I remember right, it had a little bit of a cone shape, but it wasn't prominent. You know, it wasn't like a pyramid sitting on somebody's head, but it was raised a little bit. But I, like I said, with the hands, I, I was concentrating on the hands because I could see them just clear as day. I mean, they were wrapped around the tree pulling pulling these two small trees apart. I know it was looking over him, but I just caught it when I came around with the lights and stopped to where he had enough time to put it up over his face. But yeah, I did I didn't really I saw the hair and it looked like maybe a code shape, but I was looking at the hands because they were just right out there in the open, more or less. The screams you said you've heard this, you heard the screams a few oh times. Can, are those, can you describe, you know, there's a few different, you know, we hear the Bigfoot sounds on the different types of media. There's different types. Is is there any way you can kind of describe maybe what type of scream or is it like how Ohio howl or anything like that? Um, well, I'm trying to think. It, it kind of mimicked some of the, uh, there's a couple sounds on, I think fighting Bigfoot that they had tapes of that were were really close. Okay. Not exact, but it was the low tone or it was high, then low, and then kind of low high again. It was just kind of a but it was the duration that that killed me. Because usually a coyote, you know, they'll they'll howl when it's a few seconds. This seemed like it was for about eight to 10 seconds. And it was, it was a loud scream, loud. And it didn't, and it wasn't like a cougar scream either. And I've heard them plenty of times and it was nothing even close too uh, too short of a call. A cougar is too short of a call to match this. All I know is when it got across the road and it screamed, every hair on my body stood up. It didn't shake you, but you were physically shaking of just hearing that scream that close. Hmm. It it was awesome. Now I think it's awesome. Back then I was scared to death. But Your son is around 35 right now, I think, if I do the math. Yeah. how did this affect him later in life as an adult, if it did? You know what? It hasn't. Uh, he does bushcraft survival things. He'll go out in the woods and with his knife and and a hatchet sometimes and just stay for three or four days out in the woods just living off the land and what's there. It, 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 it didn't affect him in a way. In fact, I think it made it the other way. Now he's not afraid and he wants to fight it type thing. So it actually did good instead of bad. That is extremely interesting. So it, I, I'd guess he's probably out in Oregon doing his thing, bushcrafting out there. <laughs> yeah, he, he lives in the southern part of Oregon. Southwest. Yeah, he he he's actually I'd actually, you know, now that I never thought of it that way, but it's kind of went the opposite way and he's he's not afraid of anything. He just he just wants to see it again. He says, Well, if I see it, I see it, Dad. I says, Yeah, we all will. Hopefully someday again. 
but that's really really interesting um if he ever does have any encounters you know uh, keep me in mind for sure um so now i will i'll let you continue um with, with what happens <laughs> next which the listeners are probably like okay what happens next yeah and this was this was this was awesome i mean you know that it's the few occasions i've had that it, this was this was incredible and i was thrilled uh, but now jump forward to 2007 we were uh we decided a wife wanted to take up some hunting, so I took her up there to go hunting. And so we get up there, pitch our tent, and get all camp set up. And we have a we have a cabin tent that's ten by twelve, and it's seven and a half feet tall. So we could stood up, we could stand up in our tents and everything. So it's just her and I and the dogs. So we had. I think five dogs at that time, four dogs at that time. And they were four chihuahuas, believe it or not. And we were, uh, we got up there the first night. And it, like I said, it, it was again quiet. It was just the forest was too quiet. No coyotes, no nothing. Kind of strange, but oh well, we just went out our way. The first night was just nothing, nothing happened. Second night, nothing happened. And then the third night, it was quiet again. And we got done with the fire, got done with dinner. And we decided that, well, it's time to go to bed. And it was supposed to rain that night. So we took a tarp and laid it over half the tent on the back side and halfway over the front so that we could still get out the the uh, uh, front of the tent without messing with the tarp. Well, the wind blew and it blew the tarp off the tent, of course, and this was later. I, I was getting ready for bed, so I said, oh, well, if it rains, I guess we'll hope the tent's waterproof, whatever. I'm tired, but we were sitting there and I was getting ready for bed. And on the tarp, you heard a footstep and the tarp crinkled and then crinkled again. And I'm going, I looked at my wife and said, shh, be real quiet. There's something out there. She goes, oh, it's probably someone just messing her. It's the cows, because there were some cows around camp. And I says, if a cow was stepping on that tarp, you'd hear all four legs. You'd hear all four feet. I've been worked on a cow ranch for a while. It's, you can hear cows coming. You, I know their steps. This is not a cow. So just sat real quiet. And it kept coming around. And it kept coming around the side of the tent real slow, but you could hear it. And she, my wife says, this is a bear. And I says, no, it's not a bear. This is, this is something else. So I just sat there. And as I was listening, it made its way around to the front of the tent, which was kind of strange. And I thought, well, my first thought was maybe someone's out there messing with us. And I just stayed there and watched. Uh, I did have a, a shotgun in the in the tent with me, and I thought, well, I'll just wait and see what's going on. And it kind of was like those creep shows, like maybe what's going to happen next, what's going on, because you heard it walk all the way around in the front of the tent, and all of a sudden. Up on clear of the top of the tent, not far from the center, probably maybe six to eight inches from the center, you see a finger scratching the tent. 
like they're feeling it. And you could see the, the figure through, you know, not through the tent, but the way the tent folds, you know, it tents that nylon. And it was scratching the tent, like feeling something or something. And I looked at my wife and I says, well, enough's enough. And I, I think I racked the shotgun and I heard it run off. So wife says, well, somebody's messing. I said, you saw that? And she goes, yeah, I did. I said, that was a finger because it pushed down on the tent and rubbing it like scratching it with its fingernail. And she says, that, yeah, I did. I saw it. No big deal. I says, no, that was Bigfoot. And she says, no, it wasn't. I says, yeah, it was because we'd seen him up here before. And I says, that was him. And she goes, I don't think so. So the next morning, well, we went our we went out hunting that morning, but came back early. And of course, I went looking for tracks, and I could find some. It was dusty where we were at. I could see some dust spurred up, but I couldn't really make out nothing but maybe a heel track, being a heel print, part of the heel. So then I thought, okay. I've I've got to try this. I went over to the tent, and if that was somebody's finger, they had to be pretty tall, because uh, I'm only five nine, five ten, and I couldn't even hardly reach up over the. Well, I could just reach over the edge of the tent. Okay, that's far from the head. Now this thing's ten foot, ten foot in length. That tent is. And it was reaching halfway over, six, seven foot high, six foot over. And I started, I, I grabbed a stick and I said, now you get in the tent, you look up. So I took a stick, put it down on there and moved it. She goes, that's not even close to what it was. And so I tried different things to see if, you know, if I was being messed with. And I couldn't, uh, I could do the same thing that, that we saw. And I told her, I says, you know, this is the same thing that happened before. The forest was quiet. For those three or four days, the forest was just dead quiet at night. No coyotes, no nothing. And uh, it's the same area. And I, I just come to the conclusion that, that, that it just happens when you least expect it. Because that Bigfoot was the last thing on my mind while we were up there. But when I heard it walk around that tent, I mean, it's almost you. You could feel it, but you couldn't see it, and you could hear it. And just the steps, the steps, it was... I like it was sneaking up because you could just hear it hit that thing and the reach over across the top of that tent. There's no way. There's no way anybody could have done that without falling in on the tent, even if they were standing on something. But that was the, that was the, the second experience in the same area just 10 years later. Gee, that is, that is wild. Did, so after that, was that enough? So you're like, I'm not going back there anymore? Or is it a thing where I might go back there again someday? No, it came to the point to where it was, I'm going back there again. <laughs> okay. I got excited. That time I got excited. I just, I had the dogs and the wife with me, but I was, I was like, I'm not crazy. Okay, you know, that was kind of my thing. It was like, in my own brain, it was, I'm not crazy. There is actually something up here, and it's Bigfoot. Hmm. And I want to see it again. Would you go back there again for a third time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To have one more experience? Yeah. Uh, I think it would be worth it now. Do I want to keep my distance? Yeah, I really, I really don't want to come face to face with her. You know, I, I mean, I do and I don't. 
like I said, it's it's an animal. You don't know what might happen. Uh, I like the distance, but uh, I am not afraid. I'm more curious than afraid to see it again. I want to see more of it. Uh, people that have actually seen their faces, that type of thing. I, I'd love to experience that part, but uh, it hasn't made me scared to go in, in the woods at all. It's made me more curious. Absolutely. Would you be able to mark on a map the general area where this happened? I feel like there's there's got to be other people that have experienced stuff in the same area. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't. I, I can mark it on the map and send it yeah. to you. I, I just, I, I have a feeling that would be, that would be great. Scott's a good guy. He's got a very similar way of thinking as I do. Uh, so we're, we both have the same question. Do you know if there's been stories of uh, other sightings or activity in that area, either prior to you camping there or afterwards? You know, I haven't heard of much activity, but okay. I'll tell you, people over there really don't talk about it. Mm. Uh, uh, if they if they would, people think they're crazy. It's the old way of thinking. I think it's just like my grandpa was. Yeah. I mean, you know, they just don't talk about those things. You know, you guys are crazy, blah, blah, blah. I do know of a, of a couple of reports back then that happened in the Minum Canyon, which is where those reports took place that I could find out or understand where they were at was probably, I don't know, maybe... 15 to 20 miles away. So, I mean, it's not not an outreach of them moving that far. And I'm kind of on the, I don't know, my, my theory, if I could say it, uh, is that I, I think they move around. I think they almost, a small migration, not a, I don't think they're going from Alaska to California. I don't really think to go that far, but I think they have their high ground and then they have their low ground and travel with the food. I, I really believe and where we camped at is kind of the mid range between high and low. Um, and I kind of wondered if it wasn't, it was around in October, um, early October. And I almost wondered if they weren't starting to move down from their high ranges and it was just kind of a migration path, you know, my theory. Were both times in October? Yeah. Okay. Yep. They were because I, I hunted in those woods, but also my son and I went up there and did some hiking. We'd go up there and just do some scout ground, just hiking Never had, never saw anything, never had any interaction, never felt anything. Because sometimes if you've been out in the woods enough, it, you kind of feel things. Uh, you know, like, yeah, maybe we should go down there. Or you just, you got a gut feeling that maybe that's not a good place to go. Uh, we hiked all over up there. Never, I never got that feeling of, of something's there, or something's, you know, watching us or anything. But that's what kind of amazed me because I'd been in the woods and been around those woods so much and then have both these things happen in the same place. It was, it was kind of, uh, shocking because the, 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 the last thought in my mind I'd ever be able to, have those experiences that close to where I was living. I was living in La Grande at the time, but now it's in my area. I don't have to read books about it being in Washington, California, and place else. It's right up there. And of course, as my son got older, 
we'd go looking for it, but we never, never found anything. Oh, so that that is very interesting. So the times that you weren't looking, but the times that you were, oh, that's that's very interesting. Hmm. And that's why I've, I've told some people that I've talked to, I says, they say, well, we, I want to find Bigfoot. Let's go Bigfoot. And I says, you'll never find it. I says, you need to, <laughs> you need to go into the places not expecting it and not be prepared for it. And I said, that, that, that's when you see it. That's when it all happens. And that's what's happened every time. And I saw now when I go out in the woods, I hide the cameras and everything. So I'm not expected to see Bigfoot, but I'm sure going to get a picture of it this time. <laughs> yeah, you so see, you're good to go. With, you have a camera with you and, and maybe even audio recorder. Who knows? But yeah, that's yeah, cool. audio recorder, and and then the, what was it about? I guess it's been ten years. Finally, got night vision, and so, and that's been real handy. Uh, so you know, I'm not I'm not the richest fellow. I can't afford the the uh, all the fancy toys they have for Bigfoot hunting. So uh, yeah, someday, someday I'll have them. Well, D, it has been real, a really interesting chat uh, f about an area I haven't really talked to a lot of people about. So it'll be interesting to see what comes of this uh, interview. And um, you have we talked a little bit earlier today that uh, you agreed to to stay on a little bit longer. We're going to talk about some other subjects uh, for the, uh, the Patreon um kind of like an after show and it's kind of non Bigfoot related subjects, but it'll get interesting. It's kind of a new thing that I, I'm trying out. So um, yeah, we sure. will, we'll, we'll chat about that, but I just want to say thank you so much uh, for coming on. If you enjoyed this episode and wish there was more to hear from Dee, well, guess what? There is. Uh, I'm doing strange days for some episodes now if the interviewee's up for it. And what that is is I ask them all sorts of questions about weird stuff that's happened in their life that is not related to Bigfoot. Uh, sometimes this gets extremely intense, so it is not for the faint of heart. Uh, and it is available for members of the podcast. You can become a member of the podcast by going to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society or going over to the YouTube channel member and clicking the join button under the second tier, which is the Bigfoot Posse tier. If you're wanting to get the full Bigfoot Society member experience, I would recommend joining over on Patreon as our community over there is pretty wild and it's a good time and uh, we have ways of hanging out and uh, just getting to know each other better. So. Definitely check out Patreon, but YouTube is there as well for those who aren't able to make the jump across platforms. Please take a minute to help out the show by subscribing on YouTube, making sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any notifications, and share the episode on YouTube with a friend. Also, if you're listening to us on a podcast, thank you so much. Make sure that you're subscribed, share the show with a friend. Really, it's all about sharing the show wherever you can. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter related to the following or know someone who has, please reach out to me at bigfootsociety at gmail.com or pass on my email. Here's a list. All right, I'm going to use this space uh, this week to announce that I'll be at the Sasquatch Summerfest in Oak Ridge, Oregon as an attender. I won't be presenting or anything, but I'll be hanging out trying to interview people that have had Bigfoot encounters. If you're from the Oak Ridge, Oregon area or surrounding and you've had a Bigfoot experience, please contact me directly, bigfootsociety at gmail.com. Also, Priscilla was nice enough that if you get your tickets through sasquatchsummerfest.com and use code bigfootsociety, you can get 50% off the cost of your tickets, which is a big amount. So uh, code Bigfoot Society to get 50% off your tickets, sasquatchsummerfest.com, and that uh, helps out the podcast as well. A special thank you to all the Bigfoot Society Patreon and YouTube channel members. It's your support that helps keep the show going, and I extremely appreciate it. One more thing. Okay, here's the deal. So 
we're at the point, guys, where it is, there's no stopping us. We are going to full-time podcast no matter what. But I need your help to get there. I figured it out. And we need approximately 700 more people in the Patreon in order to reach our goal of going full-time, uh, actually able to go to places, um, people that have been having Bigfoot activity, interview them face-to-face, -face, check it out for myself, all that good stuff. If you guys can... Guys, this is, this is the time. If you can at any time become a supporting member of the Bigfoot Society, go to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. I would appreciate it. It's going to help us get to the next level, uh, pretty much the final level. You guys are amazing for listening. If you can't become a supporting member, please share this episode everywhere you can. Share it with anyone who's into Bigfoot encounters, and that means a world to me as well. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next time. I can get on here and we can tell our stories. Maybe there's somebody else out there listening that's too afraid to tell their story. Maybe this will give them the courage to come out and not feel so bad about it. Who cares what anybody thinks? I know what I saw. I know what's out there. That's all I care about. let people know. Please let them know. If you ever see one of these things, you need to tell. Because if you don't, then shame on you. You know? Shame on you.